Uh, this is a video about equilibrium and uh, the intention of the video is to give background about equilibrium reactions uh, in order for people to be able to understand solubility equilibrium. Uh, once you understand solubility equilibrium there are all sorts of calculations that can be done following on from that and uh, this video is building towards those calculations. It's going to go through the bullet points in order on the screen and we're going to start off by defining equilibrium reactions. If we were to take a reaction like a metal with an acid or combustion of a hydrocarbon, we would describe those reactions as going to completion. What this means is that when those two reactants react, they will continue to do so until something runs out, at which point the reaction stops. We use a single headed arrow to signify this reaction. Um, however, an equilibrium reaction is different because when you combine the reactants, they will react to form the products. However, this reaction will stop even when both reactants are still present in fairly significant amounts. Uh, we use a different arrow to signify a, a um, equilibrium reaction in an equation. We use a double-headed um, harpoon style arrow. And uh, if we were to study the concentrations of reactants and products in an equilibrium reaction, we would probably see something like this. Over time, the reactant A has turned into product B, so the reactant concentration has gone down and the product concentration has gone up. However, not all of the reactants actually has actually been used up and the whole reaction appears to have stopped because there's no more products being made. Um, we could look at a certainly more uh, slightly more detailed version of this graph uh, using the last reaction as its example. If we were to mix hydrogen and nitrogen, they will react to make ammonia. So their concentrations go down and the ammonia concentration goes up. However, uh, even though both reactions are still present in quite large amounts, the ammonia production uh, has stopped. The point at which the ammonia production has stopped, where the line is flat, uh, is where we, do, we would say that the reaction has reached its equilibrium point. Um, at this stage, the forward and back reactions will actually still occur, but their rates are the same, so there's no net product formation. Uh, to think about exactly when a reaction will stop, um, it's sometimes useful to use an analogy like a uh, lever with a fulcrum. Uh, we can put the fulcrum on this lever in different places and in order for the lever to be balanced, of course the reactant and product concentrations would have to be different. If the, le if the fulcrum was placed over here, then in order to be balanced the reactant concentrations would have to be large and the product concentrations would have to be quite small. So this is a sort of reaction that would stop even when there are quite large amounts of reactants still present. Um, however, we could change this round and move the fulcrum, in which case the product concentrations are going to have to be high and be balanced out by a relatively small reactant concentration. So this reaction will go almost to completion, but not quite. Uh, if we have this situation, we often use words to describe it. We would say that the equilibrium is favoring the forwards reaction or favoring the formation of products, because at equilibrium, there's more, product con uh, more products than reactants. The flip side of this is that if the equilibrium was the other way around, we would say that it favors the backwards reaction or favors formation of reactants, because at equilibrium, their concentration is the higher one. The next part of this video is how to write equilibrium expressions. Um, the letter K is used for an equilibrium constant. Uh, there are a few different subscripts that this is often paired up with. However, um, that's not too important right now. The thing is that every reaction, however, will have a value for K. And how it is calculated is that it is calculated using the concentrations of everything in the reaction once it is at its dynamic equilibrium point. And that's the point where the reaction appears to have stopped. Uh, using this one here as an example, the rule is for an equilibrium expression is that the equilibrium constant is always product concentrations divided by reactant concentrations. Using this particular example, the product 
uh, we have is ammonia, so we have ammonia concentration. And because there are two moles of ammonia being produced, we actually have to square that concentration, so it becomes ammonia concentration squared. Doing the same thing for the reactant side, we have three moles of hydrogen, which means we have hydrogen gas concentrations cubed, and that is going to be multiplied by nitrogen gas concentration. Uh, the important thing about this is that we never include solids or liquids in these. So we know how to write Kc expressions, but what does the Kc value actually mean? We know it is worked out by product concentrations divided by reactant concentrations. Uh, the mathematics can get a little bit messy if there are different mole ratios involved in the equation. But essentially, we are looking at a ratio of product concentration divided by reactant concentration. Possibly the reaction may heavily favour the products, which means the product concentration is much, much higher, as shown by the size of the two texts. This means that to calculate Kc, we would do a large number divided by a smaller number. The answer we get would be larger than 1. The bigger the difference, the higher that number would be. The flip side of that would be if the reaction heavily favours the reactants, in which case product concentration is small, whereas reactant concentration is much, much larger. The result we get, if we do a small number divided by a large number, we must get a small number. Potentially, we may find that the two concentrations are very, very similar to each other, in which case the Kc value is likely to be very, very close to exactly 1. This is how solubility equilibrium works. Uh, say, for example, I have some solid sodium chloride. Uh, that's an ionic substance that will contain sodium ions and chloride ions. I take some of that solid and I put it inside a beaker of water. What will happen is the ions will begin to break free from their crystal structure and they're going to float into the solution. However, there's a certain limit to how many ions can fit inside a given volume of solution. Um, once that limit has been reached, then the solubility equilibrium has become established. Uh, once we are at this equilibrium point, we have what is called a saturated solution of the salt. Um, because this is an equilibrium reaction, we can write an equilibrium expression for it. Uh, we call this the Ks expression because it involves solubility. It will still be products over reactants. In this case, the products of the two ions. And the reactant is solid sodium chloride. However, we never include solids inside equilibrium expressions. So in the Ks expression, there is actually no reactants appearing at all. However, the Ks value is an equilibrium constant. So it tells us what limits there are on the sodium and chloride ions uh, concentrations when the reaction is at equilibrium.